Restaurants, McDonald's of Guam, I'm Loving It, and King's Restaurants. Always open, always local, and serving up favorites for over 40 years. Ahead on primetime, mass testing kicks off tomorrow at the Istanbul Gym. Plus, during her press briefing today, the governor of Guam announces she'll be extending her executive order another month, but roadblocks will be no more. And also during the press briefing, Rear Admiral John Mononi gives an update on the status of the USS Theodore Roosevelt. Half a day and good evening, I'm Adriana Cotero. Before we get to the latest in headlines, a message from one of our frontline heroes. Buenas, Raymond Yons with Guam Fire Department Rescue Unit, reminding everybody to stay informed, stay safe, and stay at home. Thank you, Firefighter Munez. We cannot express enough gratitude and appreciation to all our frontline heroes. Over the weekend, the Istanbul pilot program that aimed to conduct 100 tests resulted in much less, and now the program can expand to include all residents this week. Governor Lulian Guerrero made the announcement during her daily press briefing. Here are the details. Expanded testing is happening. Now with more test kits here and the pilot program completed, Guam is expanding COVID testing capacity to anyone displaying symptoms. This week, individuals can visit designated testing sites for drive-through and walk-in testing. The locations open tomorrow, April 28th for residents in Dededo and Jigo at the Estimbo Gym from 3 to 6 p.m. On April 29th from 3 to 6 p.m., testing is open for all island residents at the Estimbo Gym. April 30th, testing for central residents will be conducted at the Manilao Senior Center from 3 to 6 p.m. And on May 1st, from 1 to 4 p.m., southern residents can be tested at the Agate Senior Center. The testing is free. All residents are asked to bring their ID. So where are we now in terms of the testing? Well, I'm happy to report that uh, today we got the arrival of 400 gene experts. So we're going to launch our other machine within the department. And uh, we also have 696 more tests added that just arrived today. In fact, we're sharing some with uh, GMH. And right now our ABI 7500, we have 317. So altogether we have about 1,413. However, we're expecting another shipment from the World Health Organization that's expected any time as I speak, uh, hopefully this week. According to Public Health Director Linda Denorsi, this makes for a testing capacity of 6,100 altogether. And this week, individuals living in multi-generational households are considered most vulnerable and encouraged to undergo testing. Denorsi says as we journey through the pockets of infections in the remote areas, the next step will be to look at frontline workers, first responders, and healthcare personnel. Why we're doing these pocket uh, areas to identify high-risk groups that are not able to come to the clinics. And that is the reason why we want to make certain that we're reaching as many people as we can in different locations. Denorsi emphasizes that with expanding testing abilities, this includes public and private clinics. People can call their health care providers to get tested, and for those without health insurance, can call public health centers or the public health medical triage hotline phone numbers. That is 480-7859, 480-6760, or 6763. 4807883 and the ADA number 6876170. The roadblocks that were set up a few weeks ago as a way to encourage people to stay home will be lifted on Tuesday. But the executive order on social distancing that expires tomorrow will continue for at least another 30 days. Those announcements were also made today by the governor as she resumed her COVID-19 press briefings. As of tomorrow, Tuesday, and moving forward, we will not have the roadblock. But we are going to, again, be monitoring uh, very closely our incidences of um, COVID cases to, again, be assured that uh, that decision is adequate and also appropriate for the circumstances we are in today. She also says the health emergency order could actually go on for months beyond June 5th. For one, it provides the continuous flexibility to address the ever-evolving pandemic and also... Our uh, federal programs that have been um, provided through the CARES Act and the other two uh, packages of uh, financial aid is only able to be uh, effected as long as the public health emergency continues. Meanwhile, the governor won't be announcing her much-awaited recovery plan until Thursday. 
It will contain specifics on the phased-in reopening of non-essential business and government services. It's at the stage right now where um, all the various uh, panel members that are representative of uh, the community have submitted their input and their ideas, and we've been really getting a lot of good information from the community, um, Nestor, in terms of um, maybe standard operating procedures to to be guided once we start lifting these measures. And as a result of that, uh, we will be sending out as guidance through public health. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Leconto. Provide more money now for the unemployed and underemployed. That's what Senator Regine Bisco Lee is asking the governor to do with some of the more than $117 million in discretionary federal funding that's coming in. Nestor Leconto reports. Senator Lee sent a letter to the governor urging her to provide direct aid to the many people she's heard from that are out of work and are suffering. We want to be able to put money into the hands of our people right now. They can't wait for a stimulus check that, well, you know, it might be coming in a week or two weeks. We don't know that for sure. Adeloupe is due to receive nearly $118 million in federal emergency funding from the CARES Act. And Lee says, according to the guidance from the Treasury Department, the governor has wide latitude in spending the money. You know, we don't want to tear anybody down at this moment, but we, we are saying, hey, we have done the homework. We've read into this. You know, we've done our research and, and this is a great way forward. We're asking for just a portion of that money to be given to our people. She says in addition to direct financial assistance to residents, the Treasury guidance also explicitly allows for vouchers for food and necessities, food delivery and grants to small businesses. Earlier this month, Lee was urged to set aside a local aid bill that would have paid individuals $400 apiece in local stimulus checks. This after the governor announced her plan to advance federal stimulus payments to the neediest families who make $10,000 or less. I was really disappointed in that decision. I felt that our plan, um, you know, it was it cost about 13 to 14 million dollars, but it would get hand, money into the hands of people who make 40,000 dollars AGI or less. Right. And so that's like 30,000 families that we could have been assisting for just a little bit more. In her response letter, the governor did not directly address the direct aid for the unemployed, instead writing that she is researching the allowed uses of the funds to make sure they aren't forfeited. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Leconto. So what exactly is in the U.S. Treasury guidance? It was issued almost a week ago. The governor, during her media briefing, says she's not holding back the money, but is working to ensure it's spent within the parameters set by the federal government. Chris Barnett reports. According to the April 22nd guidance issued by the U.S. Treasury, there's a long list of expenses that are covered for CARES Act funding given to territories such as Guam. Now, they include funding for medical expenses at GMH and public health, including COVID-19 testing, PPEs, quarantine, and public safety measures undertaken in response to the coronavirus crisis. The funds can also be spent on payroll expenses for public safety and public health care employees whose services are substantially dedicated to mitigating or responding to the public health emergency. Expenses related to the maintaining of DOC and for the homeless. $118 million can also be used for grants to small businesses to reimburse the costs of interruptions caused by required closures and meals to residents, including senior citizens and other vulnerable populations. KUAM asked the governor, what are her priorities on how she plans to spend the CARES Act funds? If I can use the money, I will use the money, but I need to make sure that I use it appropriately and I'm not violating any kind of federal condition. Otherwise, all of the programs are going to be held back and taken away. Governor Lulian Guerrero adding she's working hard to provide local assistance within the boundaries that have been set by the feds. I just want the public to know that I am doing everything I can legally. I am doing everything I can humanly to provide the help to our people. I am not holding any of this money back. Why would I when it's given to help out our economy, given to help uh, fight the coronavirus? You know, I don't have anything else to say other than I'm doing my best to get it out as fast as I can 
given the parameters and conditions that I need to work from. Separate from the 118 million unemployment assistance from the pandemic unemployment assistance program and the remainder of stimulus checks that are still weeks away from being cut. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Chris Barnett. Every sailor aboard the USS Theodore Roosevelt has now been tested, 833 positive and 4,105 negative, with a few results still pending. Two remain in the U.S. Naval Hospital and neither is in the ICU. Rear Admiral John Manoni had a further update at the governor's press briefing today on construction of emergency medical facilities such as the one in the grounds of the Naval Hospital. The EMED system is operational as of April 20th and is ready to receive patients should the need arise. Construction by CTF 75 CDs continues on the larger expeditionary medical facility project at South Benagayan. We expect that this field hospital to be up and running in the coming days to support TR, and if needed, we will be postured to help support the government of Guam in the fight against COVID-19. The Admiral says there's also no truth to speculation that the medical facilities will be used for other service personnel, such as the sailors from the USS Ronald Reagan, who may become infected by the virus. The primary reason was to support Theodore Roosevelt, which uh, I'm sure everybody understands, you know, 5,000 potential patients showing up on um, March 27th is a significant event for any medical community. And if we try to utilize Guam's, uh, the local medical facilities, and it went badly, we would overwhelm uh, the island's capacity. Admiral Manoni also had little comment on the fate of ousted USS Teddy Roosevelt Commander Captain Brett Crozer. Defense Secretary Mark Esper is still weighing reinstatement recommendations by top Navy leaders following the investigation into the incident. Crozer was relieved by former acting Navy Secretary Thomas Modley after his memo asking for urgent help for the virus-stricken crew was leaked to the media. And Speaker Tina Munya Barnes has closed her office following a staffer who presumably tested positive for COVID-19. The test was sent by Di Diagnostic Laboratory Services to Hawaii for confirmation. The Speaker's office was notified late Friday evening about the staffer. Over the past few weeks, only a limited number of essential staff have been working in the office while others were teleworking. The employee had been working from home but last week physically came to work on Tuesday and Wednesday. All employees who were in contact with the individual, including the speaker, aim to get tested. Although the doors to the office have been closed, the speaker and her staff will be working remotely to allow for decontamination and sanitization procedures. Stick around for more news here on Primetime. You're watching KUAM. Get up to the minute news, plus access to alerts, streaming radio, promotions, and more on your mobile device by downloading the KUAM News mobile app, available at the App Store now. We are open to serve you at Cars Plus Guam. Need a quick service for your vehicle? Visit our express lane at Cars Plus. Done fast, done right. No appointment needed. Our service team is dedicated to helping you get your vehicle in and out of the shop and back on the road quickly and secure. Simply drop off your vehicle at our express lane driveway and one of our service advisors will take care of you. Need a ride? Not to work. We have a shuttle vehicle ready to drop you back home and pick you up when your vehicle is ready. Open Monday to Saturday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Visit us today. We are open to serve you. We value relationships because when we commit, I love you, God, until you're 80, until you're 90, until you're 100, forever. We are in it for the long run so you can enjoy the moments that matter because when we commit to relationships, we never stop caring. Calvo's Select Care, health care that is always there for you. I'm Bernie Valencia with Matson. Our local Matson team understands that these are very trying times for everyone. Matson's top priority, like yours, is to keep our family safe and healthy and ensure you have what you need. We'd like to give you peace of mind that Matson's service continues on schedule and uninterrupted. Matson is committed to our weekly service from the United States West Coast to Honolulu into Guam and Saipan. We are working with the Port Authority of Guam and providing the capacity and services our customers need so they can continue to meet your needs. Matson will take all appropriate measures to ensure continuity of service into Guam and Saipan. When we work together to take care of our family and neighbors, we will emerge from this as a stronger island community. 
This public service announcement was brought to you by the Port Authority of Guam, KOAM Communications, and Matson. Encourage creativity. Hey Google, how far is it to the moon? The moon is about 238,900 miles from Earth. Because dreams start at home. GTA restart in view. Gather round the cravings pack from Taco Bell. Four crunchy tacos and four beefy five-layer burritos paired perfectly with all your Taco Bell favorites. So grab a cravings pack for your crew at Taco Bell's contactless drive-thru. It's a special delivery to your inbox every week with your KUAM News Roundup, program advisories, and promotions. Sign up for the weekly KUAM Digital Digest today on KUAM.com. Saturday evening around 9.30 p.m., the E911 Center received a call reporting a missing spear fisherman. According to the report, a male in his late 40s, early 50s was spearfishing at Pago Bay when the color lost sight of him. Guam Fire Department units from Zonia and Rescue along with U.S. Coast Guard and HSC responded. The expired body of the spear fisherman was recovered inside the reef at Pago Bay at around 10.57 p.m. The Superior Court of Guam stands by their decision in denying Mark Torrey Jr.'s motion for dismissal. Judge Arthur Barcinas responds to Torrey's opening briefing that has been filed with the Supreme Court of Guam. Torrey is before the higher court arguing his rights to a speedy trial have been violated, and he is requesting the Supreme Court order the lower court to dismiss the amended indictment. He faces negligent homicide and aggravated assault charges for the 2015 death of fellow police officer Albert Piolo. In the second try of the case, Tory asserted his rights to a speedy trial, and the defense argues that during the reassignment of the case from the assigned trial judge, Michael Bordalio, to Judge Barcinas, those rights were violated. Back in February, Tory moved for dismissal with prejudice, and ultimately, Barcinas denied the motion. The Guam Department of Education's grab-and-go meal program reaches 530,000 meals served to date. The service started one month ago and is now in the works to be continued throughout the summer. Last week, Governor Lou Leon Guerrero announced the approval of the $1 million needed to support the effort's continuation. According to GDOE, they are now confirming details with the U.S. Food and Drug Administration in order to move forward. In the meantime, GDOE staff and volunteers are at the 12 distribution sites from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., serving both breakfast and lunch meals until August 7th. Be sure to stay with KUAM for any further details on the extension date. Out of the 17 Department of Corrections personnel undergoing COVID-19 testing, results are pending for two staff members. Nearly a month ago, a DOC recruit tested positive for the virus, resulting in an on-site visit from public health and CDC staff. Through contact tracing, it was reported that 17 DOC staff was in close contact with the recruit. According to Major Anton Uggen, there have not been any new infections reported and all DOC recruits and officers have returned back to work, with the exception of the two individuals. Major Uggen says since there has been new protocols in place in order to prevent an outbreak at the prison. Again, right now, what the process, of course, when a new arrestee comes in, they are screened medically. We do have a medical team. They are screened. They are provided a mask. We give them a mask. If someone does develop symptoms or show symptoms, they would be quarantined away from the other population. Uh, we have a place in Agania that, uh, for that. We also have a place in Manila, uh, a unit that's been shut down for a while. We have went in and cleaned it up and uh, done some minor repairs. And that will be our isolated, our quarantine unit. Major Uggen adds that next week they plan to reevaluate current restrictions in place. This includes on whether or not to allow incoming visitations or drop-offs. And with regional headlines, here's KSPN2 News in Saipan. Half a day Guam, here are the headlines for CNMI. Today
today, this morning, we receive uh, additional test kits uh, from South Korea. Um, we also uh, received um, a PCR machine, uh, a dry ice machine to prepare us uh, for our community-based uh, testing that uh, we are expecting to uh, fully launch um, Monday. Uh, sites will be, uh, dis will be uh, shared out uh, over the weekend and um, we will be uh, providing more details in regards to uh, our testing, uh, community-based testing efforts uh, that we're doing. That will provide COVID-19 testing to those who want to be tested. Villa Gomez says they are still waiting on the remaining 20,000 test kits from South Korea. We are uh, also uh, getting more uh, viral uh, transport, media, transport media, VTM, uh, from South Korea. So that that puts us um, in, a, in a good uh, uh, you know, administration effort to uh, to go out and uh, and plan out for community-based uh, testing uh, for next week. As of today, April 24th, there have been 14 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the CNMI. 241 people have been released from quarantine. 11 have recovered from the virus and two have died, according to the CHCC COVID-19 website. Villa Gomez says the medical care and treatment site located at the back of the hospital is almost complete, which will act as the COVID-19 site until Kanoa Resort is finished. We are at 99% completion today, Friday, um, for our uh, MCAT uh, site. Uh, we are very hopeful and, and uh, we're looking forward for a Saturday tomorrow's uh, uh, opening. So. Um, uh, that that's that's great. That's good news for for CACC and the task force. While we continue our efforts to uh, continue construction at Kanoa Resort, um, and that is expected to uh, be completed in about uh, two and a half week, weeks. So um, that's uh, also uh, within the target uh, date and time. Uh, for for us to uh, to have a facility um, and to be able to uh, administer COVID-19 care at Kanoa. For more news, visit SayapanTV.com. For KSPN2, I'm Ashley McDowell. Taking advantage of the good weather on Sunday, firefighters from the Estembo Fire Station's B Platoon and members from the Guam Community College PARS alumni spent the morning sprucing up the Machechi Senior Center by cutting the grass and cleaning the yard. According to firefighter John Anthony Munya, the, com the community needs to take care of one another. The center is currently assisting with the distribution of meals for the seniors. Munya adds next month they are looking to spruce up a school campus. Keep it here, more primetime news when we return. Encourage creativity. Hey Google. How far is it to the moon? The moon is about 238,900 miles from Earth. Because dreams start at home. GTA restart if you. Ruby Tuesday Guam is still preparing the dishes you love for either curbside carryout or delivery. Call them at 647-7828 or 647-7829 for curbside carryout service with a smile. For delivery, download the free Grab and Grub app and follow the instructions to get Ruby Tuesdays delivered to your door. Stay safe and healthy, Guam. Want a real taste of New York? The Big New Yorker is back with a big, bold taste and a sweet marinara sauce on a crust that's 30% larger than our large. Handmade to perfection, it's just $9.99 per carryout. The Big New Yorker, only at your island pizza hut.
Guam's auto appearance specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's auto appearance specialist. Over 20 years of experience. Our island community may be small in numbers, but large at heart. For many of us, our local restaurants are the core of celebrating major life events. Birthdays, graduations, retirements, and even date night. Although our favorite spots are unable to host these milestones that bring us together, we at good to go remain committed to delivering your favorite meals so you can still celebrate those that matter most to you. Marit, so resident Steve Cruz, his wife Abby, and their family did their part to give back to the community, hosting a free face mask drive through in the Southern Village. They spoke with Chris and Bree on containing COVID this morning. Uh, we always try and end the, the show on a good note, uh, and we're going to try and do that today and head down to the village of Molesta, where we have uh, resident Steve Cruz on the line. Good morning, Steve. Hey, good morning, Chris. Uh, so, good morning. What a great thing you guys did uh, over the past weekend with your free mask drive. Thank you very much. Uh, it was well worth it. Mm -hmm. And so, if you could go for for viewers who aren't aware of what what you did and and, and your and your wife um, Abby, um, I believe it was April twenty fourth. That was a Friday. Correct. It was Friday. Uh, initially, we. Uh, put out flyers in the village at the village store saying that from 10 to 12 we'll be passing out uh, free masks and uh, you know my wife and, and our kids it was a family uh, project mm -hmm. and you guys actually distributed uh, a lot uh, from what um, you know the pictures that I've seen and I think we have some of the pictures if we're not rolling them oh yeah we um, we did it from 10 to 12 and we decided to come back uh Four to six to catch a lot of people coming home from work uh, that day, and uh, you know we just parked there at the Santa Maria and Carmel Park, and uh, we caught the motorist uh, going both directions. Actually, it, you know our village traffic is very slow, so you know we're able to uh, do a drive-by uh, and, and pass the mask out. You know, and it included not just the villagers, but people from the neighboring villages that were going through. Uh, of Guam workers that were in their official vehicles and private sector employees that were going by. We, we just gave them out. Mm -hmm. What made you decide, you know, I'm going to do this. I want to reach out and give these free masks. Well, you know, the people in Marisa have been adhering to the, uh, the protocol, you know, stay home, you know, be safe. And uh, sometimes they, they all have to go to the, the mom and pop stores to get whatever they need you know and so we decided just to give out masks and uh they were all you know everybody needs it uh, we're all trying to practice uh be safe and uh, it's a very simple uh gesture mm -hmm. how many masks uh, would you say you guys were able to give out uh steve uh, about a thousand as a matter of fact uh we just left Mariso maybe about 40 minutes ago and we delivered uh, to a couple of houses that I guess weren't able to uh, go out and, and get any. So, you know, we had put out that anybody needed it while we still have supplies, uh, we'll deliver it. And this actually, because we have some of the pictures that we're rolling, um, you, you didn't only just deliver uh, or hold masks a uh, mass drive but you also did something else and i think that's worthy of sharing with people for uh the manumco in marizo yeah i think it was last month um we put together some care packages uh and we delivered them to uh, the manumco the ones that are homebound uh a few of them up at the senior citizens uh housing area in marizo and uh it, it just they were miscellaneous items to include even toilet tissue i mean 
everybody needs something, you know, like that. And, uh, so you were one of the people hoarding toilet tissue. Okay. It was you. Got it. <laughs> we, we, we cornered the, uh, the market, yeah. Just kidding. And what are, what are they saying when you go and, uh, you know, you deliver these things with a mass drive? What was the response you got, Steve? Well, from the Monopco, they, they really appreciate it. Uh, I mean, uh, like I said, we had, like, soup, we had snacks, we had uh, different items in there. And um, they, they appreciate the, uh, the visit, first of all, and uh, the company and, and uh, just the delivery. And we didn't stay long because we, we don't want to, uh, you know, it's just a drop and deliver and hello and, uh, you know, goodbye. Okay. I'm pretty sure, though, some of them in Umco were probably like, hey, you want to have a mongo bean? I just made a pot. You know, they were trying to give back, right? Because there's always that in well, and the reciprocity. Just, just uh, as a matter of fact, this morning, the house that we went to deliver, you know, the guy was saying, hey, you know, I'm, I'm making some coffee. Have some coffee. And I said, you know, I said, I'd love to, but because we're not, you know, we have to practice that social uh, distancing. Uh, I said, another day. I said, I, I'll be back and, uh, you know, we'll have that cup of coffee. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Steve, for what you're doing uh, for the people in um, Lesso. Any final comments before we let you go? Yes, you and Chris are doing an awesome job. Thank you for your service and appreciate updating the, the people of Guam with uh, everything that uh, we're going through. Uh, it's uncharted waters that we're traveling, but uh, keeping us informed is uh, a great help. Well, appreciate right. that, Steve. Thank you. And you know, the show's only going to get better now that we got our magic wand in here. <laughs> All right, come down to Molesto and visit us. Okay. When it's uh, when it's clear. clear to travel. All Thank right. you. Okay. Take care. Hey, All wash right. your hands. Okay. Okay. All right. okay. okay. Steve, Steve, and Abby uh, delivering uh, or ho- holding a free mask drive for wow. the residents in um, a Molesto. thousand masks. Yeah. And also prior to that, last month, they had uh, put together these these care packages, I guess you could say, and then they delivered it to uh, the Manumco and Marizo. So, so good on you. Okay. COVID heroes. COVID heroes. MTO Maintenance will now completely sanitize your home, office, or business with state-of-the-art commercial sprayers. For over 30 years, MTO Maintenance has been committed to the health and safety of our customers. And now, more than ever, a clean home, office, carpets, and furniture is a necessity to our island. Give us a call today. Stay healthy and stay safe, Guam. Call 647-6861 for an appointment. We are with you. At times when you need us most, you can count on us to be there. When you need someone to talk to, when you need to stay informed, when you need to brighten your day, when you need to stay connected. We are here keeping our promise that while the world is changing, we keep working so you can keep connecting. We are your Docomo Pacific family and we are here to help. Gather round the cravings pack from Taco Bell. Four crunchy tacos and four beefy five-layer burritos paired perfectly with all your Taco Bell favorites. So grab a cravings pack for your crew at Taco Bell's contactless drive-thru. We are open to serve you at Cars Plus Guam. Need a quick service for your vehicle? Visit our express lane at Cars Plus. Done fast, done right. No appointment needed. Our service team is dedicated to helping you get your vehicle in and out of the shop and back on the road quickly and securely. Simply drop off your vehicle at our express lane driveway, and one of our service advisors will take care of it. Need a ride? Not to work. We have a shuttle vehicle ready to drop you back home and pick you up when your vehicle is ready. Open Monday to Saturday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Visit us today. We are open to serve you. What does a brilliant cut mean to me? It means consistent quality. Right across the age expressions, we never compromise on quality and flavor. It's also the very particular cut of spirit we take to fill our barrels. Tasting it today is just as exciting as the first time I tasted it. That is the brilliant cut.
Want a real taste of New York? The Big New Yorker is back with a big, bold taste and a sweet marinara sauce on a crust that's 30% larger than our large. Handmade to perfection, it's just $9.99 per carryout. The Big New Yorker, only at your island pizza hut. Our island community may be small in numbers, but large at heart. For many of us, our local restaurants are the core of celebrating major life events. Birthdays, graduations, retirements, and even date night. Although our favorite spots are unable to host these milestones that bring us together, we at good to go remain committed to delivering your favorite meals so you can still celebrate those that matter most to you. And before we close out the news tonight, our latest round of birthday shout outs from the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club. Happy birthday to Amai Nicole Kitsitu, who turns 11 today, coming from Dad, Mom, Hannah, and Tori. We love you so much. Amaya is awesome, we say, and we agree. Happy Joe Kitsitu, who turns 5 0 today, coming from your girls, Hannah, Amaya, and Tori. Hey, nice. We love you so much. You're the best daddy ever. Jacob and Isabella Martinez, happy 8th birthday to our dingas. Very, very nice. And Biba Biba Cumpleaños to Robert Anthony Regis Perez, who guides a house. He thought to be Nana, Minu, Lo, Logan, Uncle Rufin, Uncle Jason, Uncle Peppy, and the other Uncle Jason. We miss you, and when you're ready, come on over, and we'll celebrate. They say God bless you forever. Francine Amber Cruz, also happy birthday to you, and happy blessed birthday. We hope you had a great time with loved ones on your special day. Love always, the fam bam. And happy belated birthday wishes to Francisco Tidegui, who was born on the 26th. Happy birthday, turning 78 years young. Your family says happy birthday. Remember, you can be part of the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club by registering online on KUAM.com. Please make sure to include with your photo your name and birthday. That's going to do it for us here on Primetime. Thanks for watching. Have a good night. Let's just uh, put it there.